Hey everyone, welcome back to this video series of how to utilize Google Search Console API with Python. So far we have covered uh, two videos. The first one was about writing the enough code so that you can authenticate through your Google Search Console and you can find that code uh, in, my, um, in my GitHub repository. Um, and then second video was about once you start to make calls to Google Search Console uh, and once you complete the authentication, how you can loop through the API calls and get all the rows of data that you have. Um, in the second video, we also talked about how to build a data frame and using that data frame to export the data that you need. Um, and going forward, you will also use dimensions and dimension groups. So we also talked about how to operate that. Um, so I think those two videos are very fundamental to, and consider them as, as a base to start doing any sort of analysis and visualization using Google Search Console data. And if you haven't seen yet, uh, or if you haven't made your code ready in Google Colab, then I would highly recommend going through those two videos. But in this third video, and I'm, I'm super excited about this video because now we are starting to get really into the visualization of all those Google Search Console data. And five days back, I made an announcement that uh, it is going to change your visualization game. It changed for me, um, at least, and it took me quite a while to understand the data frame and how to do the, all the operations and transformation that I would like to see. But once you have that piece ready, that gives you kind of a unique tool in your arsenal to, to go out and think about how you would like to diagnose a specific problem or solve a specific problem in, in SEO. So. Um, this is going to be like the first video visualization, so I, I won't go much into detail, uh, but still we are going to talk about how to create plotly charts using the data frame that we built. And then we will go into a couple of visualizations that I, I think really instrumental. Um, and that is going to be how to use Google search console data to first see number of unique URLs ranking over a period of time. And then second is the number of unique queries ranking over a period of time. And this is important because if you look at the, the content framework that I have prepared, I'm, I'm not sure if you have uh, got a chance to see that or not, but I have few SEO frameworks um, and I talk about technical and content and all of that, but this has been my understanding so far in SEO. And if you want to increase the traffic and that's the goal of every SEO, is those those traffic increase can just happen through th three things one is imagine wherever you are ranking in top 10 positions let's say you are ranking on number fifth position and your current ctr is four percent and you improve that ctr from four percent to eight percent arithmetically you will double your traffic on that particular keyword second is if you are ranking on certain number of keywords in positions beyond 10 and if you bring them on the first page for all those keywords, you will start to receive the, the CTR that you are receiving and it will add to your traffic. And then the third one is you start to rank on new number of keywords, right? Um, and these are the only three things. I mean, when I think about it from a framework perspective, all of the things that you are doing has to contribute to these three things. And then eventually it will transform onto, uh, onto the things that you're working on. Now, when you think about, let's say if, if someone asks you a question that how many new number of keywords that you start to rank on, you don't have a easy way to pull that data, except you will use like SEMrush or Hrefs, and then you pull that data from there, but that's also not like an entirely uh, truer sense of data. Although that's the, that's the thing that we have available. So when I take on a new project, um, and if I want to communicate the value, uh, that I'm bringing or my initiatives are bringing, instead of just relying on organic search traffic, I would try to position my reports saying that how we are driving improvements to these three numbers, which will eventually convert into organic search traffic. And in most of the cases, if you're working on content driven site or even for that matter, technical SEO websites, the ranking on net new keyword and improving your position are the, are the crucial ones. And today, what I'm going to show you is going to help you with this rank on new number of new keywords metric to understand that. And that is what we are going to discuss today is how can you use Google search console data to analyze what are the number of unique queries that you are, uh, you are ranking on. So with that, 
I think it's time to get into the the code and let's start pulling the things uh, that we that we want to pull. So uh, the first thing that I will do is I will just open up the existing like the second uh, or the last code that I had. I'm gonna make a copy of this. Uh, so I will just come here and I'll say duplicate, make a copy, um, and I will start editing this code. So you have a you have a coherence of where we are working. Uh, from so that if you are maintaining your own code or own collab then you can um, start making edits there too so uh, what we are going to do in this video is we will say something like visualize gse data using plotly unique queries unique query count and unique count let's say so this is what i think uh, we will do in this video so let me start the code um, and first thing that uh, you are going to do is obviously define your own client id and client secrets uh, because these are mine uh, which i'll i'll change i think it's still initializing okay so I'll stop this because I just changed the code. Um, I will go here and I will say continue, continue. And I have my code. I'll just pop this code in. Okay. Now I'll ask for all the websites and I have a monocube that we are going to use. So I'll just keep this and I will say um, list of properties in GSE account, right? Um, and here we have it. Then I'm going to remove this because now there is no point in uh, just like getting this data. So I am going to delete this one and this one and this one. And we already have uh, the loop. So now we will use this loop primarily. So we'll say getting GSE data and preparing data frame using pandas because both the things all of those things are going to be like a very normal to to you and your workflow going forward so i'm just going to make it uh, as a as a one section of a code so let's say i'll bring data up to 23rd of uh, okay so let me remove all of this first and I'll, I'll not say data import pandas um yeah we can we can keep this here import pandas that's fine Uh, okay, import one as a speedy. Fine. So getting this, uh, and then I'll keep this for now. Uh, all responses. I will also remove the Excel export. I will remove query dimensions as well. And there we go. Okay. So first thing that we are going to do is. We will calculate actually the page count and for that uh, number of unique URLs ranking and for that we need two things and remember that we want to plot a chart uh, on a graph where x axis has a date as a dimension so it will show you like over a period how many number of unique URLs that we are ranking. And if you are, let's say, doing a content work, you onboarded a client or you're working at a company where you have today 250 pages. and you are having a project where you want to add 150 new number of pages then it would be important for you to track this number because you would be interested in seeing how many number of urls have started to rank and when we say started to rank which means that one new url has at least one query or search query having an impression and that makes that url an active uh, active ur uh, impression active url now before we go into that as well, it is important to clarify that all this data which we are going to fetch will be a sample data. Um, you can go to a Google Search Console uh, documentation and you can search about like sampling and it will explain what sampling means and how sampling happens and what you should expect when you uh, when you look into this data. 
So let me pull that up for you. Um, there are something like anonymized queries. Google search console anonymized queries. Yeah, so here they are they are explaining it and it's a, it's a good read for you but think of this as not every not even though you make uh even though you will make a export it's not going to give you all the data so i i forgot like where exact the documentation is uh but i think it's worth reading i'll i'll refer it refer to that in a video but i think this explains uh in some sense and here it is basically saying that when you ask as a if you ask for a list of queries and it is showing you queries in clicks then you will likely miss a lot of clicks in this and in this example they are saying that when you um, it, when you fetch the data by queries then here it is just totaling up to 450 but if you don't um, fetch the data by queries then it will be total of like 550 so you can say that it has sampled like 90% and 10% of them are anonymized so you might want to keep that in mind before you use this data but this this data still is directionally good data and correct data but i think it was important to call out so that you don't make your reports and you don't communicate without um, understanding the sampling because your your totals are not going to match uh, if you pull like a lot of dimensions uh, the google's analytics or adobe or something will say like completely different numbers but your google search console would say uh, a different number but but Keep in mind that at a date level, clicks and impressions are, are a true number. Like it, that's the that's the exact number. That's the that's the amount of traffic that is coming to your website. So, I think I, I made a bit of a detour, um, and I should have planned for better explanation for sampling. But uh, I'll go into it in in some way because I'm also thinking to optimize the sampling, and I'm I'm thinking of ways to get the best of the data possible by optimization of sampling. But anyway, right now I'll get back. Uh, and what we are now trying to achieve is how we can plot a chart where we have date on an x-axis and number of pages that they are ranking on on that particular day on a y-axis. And for that, we need two dimensions of data. One dimension is date, obviously, because that's that's what we want to plot uh, on x-axis. And then page is a second dimension because we will use this dimension to transform them into a metric and this is an important concept to grasp because what you will be able to analyze or visualize on top of what google search console ui allows is making actually new metrics out of the different combinations of dimensions and metrics as a number and and we will we will go into that but for now let's start getting this data first of all right okay so it's saying that the website is not defined so i am going to go here and i will say website is equal to this and you put it into here so it is fetching data like super easy super simple uh, i hope you are happy about all the data that you are getting because i was super fascinated initially anyway so now we have two uh, dimension right instead of query we say date and uh, second car is page third is clicks impression CTR and I think this looks perfect so we are going to append and make a list as we did last time um, and here our DA list is ready now we will use that list list of list to prepare a data frame and for that uh, the first column is actually date and second is page and now our data is is almost ready like the data frame is now ready now, uh, before we go into different things, I would like to build a plotly chart here and I'll say create a chart using plotly express. Okay. And I will take you to plotly. And if you search like plotly Python, then like pandas this is also like one good library coming from plotly and it is it is way um it's beyond basic it allows you to do like a lot of things but we are going to stick to like super basic for now and for that instead of using the full plotly we will use something called plotly express 
and plotly express is a kind of smaller version but honestly like the smaller version also does like a lot of things so plotly express currently includes like these functions and it will help you create like different charts um, you might want to spend some time and they have ready codes as well you can just like pick up these codes and you might want to see how they are creating this chart but in this example we are going to use a simple line chart to to plot the data that we have so i'm just going to copy this code um, and i will say import plotly express uh, you don't need to install any library or anything like for that i think it just comes as standard in um, in colab and you just simply write three lines of code and it is going to give you the visualization that you would like to create so in this first visualization i'm just going to plot the data that we have in google search console already because this data uh, is joined on date which means that right, right now like this df is not suitable for us to plot something because it doesn't account for so it has dates and then it has page as a column as well so we need to join all those pages and we need to make a calculation of the all the clicks over there so what i'm going to do is i am going to um, create uh, another table and for that we will have to create a new data frame and we will use something called group by so i'm going to say group by date and there is a date column that we will use to group it um, and i'll just say simple gse chart right a line chart let's say now to create this line chart what we are going to do is i'll say group by date and i will create a new data frame so i will say df grouped by date is equal to uh, so this is the this is going to be the name of a new data frame that we will that we will have but we will use the existing data frame that we have which is saved in df and i'll say df dot group by and then comma and then i will say date so this is what i want to group it with but then i want to define like different types of calculations for different columns that i want to prepare so i will start giving the names of the column and i will say i want a new column named clicks and for that clicks i want to use the existing clicks column and i want you to do the operation and the type of operation i want you to do is actually a sum right so think about it what we did we said group all the rows by one date and while you group all the rows i want you to perform some operations on each rows of data that you have within clicks as a column and i want you to make it uh, a sum and i think things will be clear once the the new uh, data frame will come up but i'm going to use this and i'll say in the same way for impressions use impression and make a sum and in the same way use position and instead of making a sum here i would say make a mean and that's it i am not going to do anything else here so let's create this data frame and that data frame is created and let's see so now it is pretty clear that we have 82 rows of data which means that last two months two and a half months worth of data is here and it has merged all the clicks impressions by sum and then it averaged out the position uh, now don't think about the position and other metrics now but i just wanted to give you a visualization of how you can transform this data and you know before we complicate things i want to make it clear that if you want to produce the same chart that we are going to producing right now you don't have to do all of this like this data is already available but this is just an example to start with to explain what the group by is uh, you could just like literally pull that data which is already available uh, and and you can visualize that but anyway uh, we will say this is the data frame that we want to use so you just write a simple code you say fig or figure uh, and you will just use whatever you use here in a variable to to write something called fig dot show but then you use px dot line so px is this uh, what you imported as a name then you say px and line is a type of chart that you want to create and then you say on x axis i want date 
on Y axis, I want clicks and the, the title of what I'm preparing, you can have title, you cannot have title, that's fine. Uh, let's just create without title, right? So as soon as you hit enter, um, it says, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. okay, so it, it is saying because, uh, so it is saying it because we don't have a date as a column, but it is an index. So generally what I would do is I would just add it here, uh, dot reset index and whatever you receive will be the final data frame, but you can also add it here and it doesn't make a difference. So now you can visualize this chart and now you have all this data and it is showing that these are the clicks you have over a period of time. You can simply come here and change the, the metrics uh, and you will also see that now the impressions are plotted. Uh, you can also see the positions uh, and now the positions will be plotted um, and it will show you how uh, it is uh, it is doing. What is a good thing about Plotly is you can um, uh, you can interact with this chart. So we will go forward and in future we'll create like um, a charts which is scatter charts and all that. We'll use like what pages are ranking and what queries and whatnot. At that point we will utilize the interactivity of this chart. But this is a simple way to create the chart. And now um, we have the basics covered. Now we will go in and we will create the the truer type of charts that we want to create, right? So the first chart uh, that we will focus on is a uh, group by date and the number of pages. So I will remove this and I will just group everything here. And then I will go into the code here um, and I'll say grouped by date and pages. Um, then we can say count of pages create charts so, okay so i will close this for now okay now um we will use the same data frame by the way right we will use this but we will create the new data frames that we want so that we can create the charts that we want to create so i will say here is like count pages df is equal to df dot group by and let's say if you want to understand how to use group by then you can also come here hover over and it will explain you all the things that you wanna uh, that you want to do so there are lots of ways to use this uh, these are just uh, my ways but I'm pretty sure that someone smarter than me can create um, these charts in a in a better or maybe simpler way right so now I will do this. Uh, I think we will use the same code. So probably I will just copy this for now. Um, but we will just make one change here. And that change is going to be, um, we will say count pages is equal to, and then we say use page as a column. And then the, the uh, and then the operation that I want you to do is actually the count of all the pages, right? So think of this as you have a DF in that DF, let's say date one. So in total, we have 55,000 rows, right? Uh, and 55,000 rows divided by 83 days of data, right? 83 uh, is 662 rows. So those 662 rows on average, we have ranking, but we don't know on, on what day, how many pages were ranking. So this is going to count the number of rows or the number of pages and it will also actually deduplicate by the way. So it will, anyway it is deduplicated because then there is no point of having additional rows. So uh, pardon me on that, but it will count all the number of rows for each day, date. And as soon as you hit enter and I will plot the DF with here so we can see it, uh, we get a chart like this. And now we have 82 days of 82 rows of data and it is showing us the clicks, impression, position, but the most important metric for us is actually count pages metric, right? Uh, because it is saying that on the 1st of January, 2023, we had 670 pages, 78 pages ranking in Google or at least, or impression active in Google. Um, and that's a good, fantastic value to, to have, to be honest. So I will use the, the same chart, uh, same code uh, for plotting. And uh, here I'm just gonna say count pages DF and I want you to plot date 
But here, instead of clicks, I have created a new metric using the dimension. Uh, and what I did actually is just like transformed the, the dimension or number of rows using one column. And that is what we are calling group by, which is dates. And then we created a new metric. And I want you to plot this. And here you can you can see. So let's let's do something more, right? Uh, and the more thing that I want it to do is I want to add dimension groups here. And for that, I'm just gonna copy paste the existing code that we have somewhere uh, of dy dimension groups is probably in a, a second code. So because I hate writing it. Um, okay so what i'm going to do is i will say the country i just want data for is usa and then i want to fetch the data from first June to me okay and I'm changing the first DF so when you revisit this code uh, make sure that I came back and, and change the code again otherwise all those numbers won't likely make sense so let's see or you know I can actually run the code right now so it makes sense for you let me do that because it's not gonna take long okay so now I think uh, all the charts will make sense. But you see, now we have data. Now this is clicks, uh, but we are not interested in clicks. Uh, we are interested in count of pages. Uh, and let's do this. Okay, so now this is a good chart, right? Um, this chart is showing us that from June 2022 up to here, um, right now it ranks on roughly 400 pages, but there was a time in November when it used to rank on roughly like almost 500 pages. So something has happened in between like August, September, October, November, they probably would have started to create more content. And then that is as a result, they started ranking on more number of pages. Uh, and that is what at least I can, I can see from here. Now, uh, there is uh, one piece which is left is if you want to give a title to this, you can just come and write like title uh, and in title, you can say number of unique pages ranking in Google in USA and it is saying that I forgot the comma and it plotted the chart now you have this title here as well it doesn't do much but I think it looks good so you could you might want to have it okay now what we want to do is I'll say grouped by date and count of queries. So we did count of pages and here we are going to do count of queries. And to do that, of course, the data that we fetched was only for the pages. And now the data that I will fetch is for, for the date, uh, for the query, um, for the queries as well. And to do that, I am going to copy paste this exact code. Uh, so that it doesn't mess up mess up the, the other things and here i will say query right i'll just keep the the country usa um and i will start to get the data and then i will copy paste this one here and then i will copy paste this one Now the changes that I want to make is instead of page, uh, we will fetch query. Here as well, in a comment, you might change as a query if you want to. Um, I don't bother, but for the sake of video, we will change it. So let it bring the data and let us create the DF. And meanwhile, it is fetching the data. We will uh, just copy paste the, the code that we have written here. And we will just edit this code. And in that edit, we will say, of course, like df group by date. And then instead of count pages, we will say count queries. And for that, 
I want you to use query as uh, as a as a column, and we will do count queries df. And it is still fetching the data. Probably I might wait if it takes too long, and I might resume the video later. But uh, as soon as the the count queries uh, happen, we can actually also bring in the chart and I will hide the chart so this is also like understandable because this website must have a lot of data uh, it must be ranking on like thousands of queries and we are asking it to bring all those values to us so um, now we have created a new column so we'll say count queries we change that instead of count pages df we will copy paste to the count queries df as a source and then we'll say number of unique pages instead of that we'll say number of unique queries ranking in google in usa and if you hit then it will just like create the chart but i think we'll have to wait until we get all the data so while that is happening what i also wanted to show you was um what i wanted to show you was how to use queries as a dimension um and fetch the the same data but i think it doesn't make sense really uh, what you can do is while you're fetching this data and preparing the data uh, i'm not gonna like create uh, something new so while you are uh, creating the data you can just fetching the data you can just come here and say query uh, is a dimension uh, and then expression is let's say something like you want to include a keyword called python and operators will be contains and then all the all the data that you get here will only be for the queries you perform all these operations on that data and then you plot a chart that way you will start to get vis visualization into uh different like dimensions uh, filters that you are uh, dimension filters that you're using right and which is awesome because think of all the all the um, possibilities that you can play with um, by using like different types of filters that you have uh, while you are while you are querying your data right so in the in the dimension you have like page you have queries you have uh, device you have countries uh, you can also say in page i want this but i don't want this um, and bunch of other things so um, what i wanted to touch on was that but likely i won't um, extend this video because it's already getting like more than 40 minutes um, so I will pause here and I'll get back once the the data is here okay so finally we fetched all the data and it is uh, amazing to see that we have fetched 1.3 million rows of data to make this visualization right so we have the data and we performed this calculation because we already had play uh, on this it already made all the calculations and um no sorry we didn't actually so let's do it um so this will create a data frame then this is uh, count why it's showing count pages Oh, because we are printing count pages that's why sorry okay so let's do this and we have 296 because that is the number of days of data that we have and then we hit plot and now we have this chart it says that in june uh, we used to rank on 4000 queries um, at a peak we ranked on 7000 unique queries and lately we have been ranking on 3200 odd queries now as I said, this is like all the data. You might want to run some filterings. Uh, I prefer to filter the actual uh, request actual data because that will reduce some sort of a sampling in a sense. Um, but you can also use this data frame um, to to make uh, filtering and remove some data. You might want to say, you know what, like just give me the the positions which is in top ten and how many number of queries are ranking in top ten. Um, and things like that so if you want to do that uh, you can do that as well let's let's actually 
uh, let's actually do that. Uh, I, I hadn't planned for this, but I think it makes a good use case. So I'll say count queries uh, ranking in top 10 positions grouped by date count queries ranking top 10 position okay okay so th the way we do this is um, i'll just use um, ta -ta 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 -ta. okay i will use i'll say something like df top 10 top uh, 10 position uh, and then i will say df and then once again df and i'll say position um, where uh, the positions is actually less than 11 let's say as soon as you do this uh, let's just see how long the length of DF is right so we have 1.3 million sorry for uh, the burping if we do the length for this then it will be a way less so now we have 300 like odd data now we now imagine like we have the full df but we removed all the rows which wasn't ranking in top 10 positions in usa and this will this will give you a good understanding of are you, why are you losing traffic like are you seeing correlation um of queries getting lesser from top 10 positions or the number of query loss that you are seeing isn't much like it might happen that you might stop seeing some impressions because of like Google algo or whatnot. So we will analyze that here. So I'll just say top 10 count queries df uh, and I will use uh, this exact thing. But we will have to change our source of df because this is where all the data lives now. And we have seen 296 rows but the count of query is much lesser now. So I will use this once again and I will plot the df. Uh, I will use this I'll plot the chart. I'll use this data frame and I will say once again, like same amount of queries. So number of queries ranking in top 10 positions in Google in the USA. Let's do it. Okay. So now this is a, 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 a kind of a different chart because at the peak, it was showing that we are ranking on 7,000 positions, uh, but now it is showing that we were ranking on like 1,700 positions. So there definitely uh, we reduced ranking on uh, top 10 positions as well. And that ranking is roughly by, I would say, 60%. Um, so it's worth going into uh, like which type of queries got reduced. And the reason I say the, the Google Search Console is really powerful is because going forward, uh, we can go in and tag all the queries by topics. And then we can also visualize like which topic lost the most traffic. And that is the the true value of I think visualization and analysis that I would uh, I would like to to make it happen. So, all right, I'll stop here. Otherwise, I can uh, keep geeking out. But I think this is what I had to share with you all, folks, today. Um, I'll just quickly quickly recap uh, what we did. I will close all these tabs, and it will give us a good overview of what happened throughout the video. So we got a list of properties. Then we just got all the data that we needed for preparing a data frame then we dwelt a little bit into what is group by date and what it means and we just plotted a simple GAC chart that is available then we created a new metric which is count of page by using date and a page as a dimension then we created a new chart where we used date and queries uh, where we used queries and date as a dimension to create a new metric which is count of queries and then the last one is we filtered the existing data set and we said I just want the the rows of the of the queries that is ranking in top 10 position and it's also worth noting that you cannot make this query call without having date as a dimension like you cannot first of all make a query call to google to say that just give me the top 10 position but also you cannot arrive at this data uh, realistically without having date um, because there is no way to plot that data so that's what we did and we had a top 10 position so that's all I got. Uh, thank you so much for watching the videos. If you have any feedback, let me know. If you want me to create a certain type of visualization, let me know that as well. I will plan the next video and I'll share the update with you on, on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you are not connected, let's connect on LinkedIn, Twitter. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I also have a project page for Google Search Console API and Python. So please subscribe and 
uh, join also the newsletter so that you can receive all the emails and thank you so much once again and see you next week